Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, our subject is China. In fact, it was intended to be China GCC relations. But something very important has happened in the last few days. And I thought I would summarize that before we go on to China and GCC. It appears that on the 9th of December, there was some kind of incursion by Chinese soldiers into Tawang area, Yangtze region, as it is known as. And um, our forces quickly moved in and they were able to turn them back. In the process, of course, people were injured because they were not using guns or anything. And they were using only the unconventional weapons. And uh, in the process, some soldiers were injured on our side and maybe some more on their side. We do not know how this happened and why it happened because we are still waiting for disengagement in the Ladakh sector. So this is rather mystifying that it happened just now. And there are several uh, theories as to why it happened. The first is that there is internal disturbances in China. We talked about it in one of our previous classes, how the zero COVID policy of, of um, Xi Jinping faced with tremendous opposition, which is uncharacteristic of the Chinese, but there are disturbances sometimes in China. On this particular occasion, it seemed to be gaining momentum and uh, somehow they, uh, dealt with it by having a relaxing a number of measures and also uh, you know, telling the people that if such measures were not imposed, there could be another pandemic kind of situation. So it is after that that uh, uh, Xi Jinping went to Saudi Arabia in a major visit. We'll come to that in a little while. Uh, the other theory is that there was a joint military exercise between India and the United States, exactly a hundred kilometers away from the line of actual control, in the same region. So this was known that we had these exercises, nothing unusual or nothing new, but apparently the Chinese were uh, concerned about it and they wanted to, uh, to oppose it or rather um, you know, show that India, China is not very happy with this kind of exercises near the border. And the third possibility is this is related to the Dalai Lama. Because as you know, Dalai Lama is aged and there are some concerns about what happens when he passes away. Uh, the tradition in Tibet is that once a Dalai Lama passes, then they wait for the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama at a place determined by God, as it were, and um, rec recognize a boy who is through serious, various uh, uh, you know, prayers and all that they discuss. They decide who this boy is, and once he is identified, he is designated as the Dalai Lama and he undergoes all the training programs, etc. This is the uh, Tibetan uh, practice. And this is why Tibet has had long periods of non-government because the child has to be born, then he has to be trained. So 10, 15, 18 years, the Tibetan administration is not very effective. So that is part of the reason why maybe Tibet was not as strong as it could be. So the problem is that China is very anxious that the new Dalai Lama should be born or at least recognized in China. And, uh, but most likely, like the previous Dalai Lama, a new one would be born in Taiwan. And um, so China, as you know, is claiming Taiwan as their territory. And therefore, they wanted to show a force to show that they are very interested in Taiwan. Taiwan is part of uh, Arunachal Pradesh. And they consider Arunachal Pradesh, all of it, as part of, uh, of uh, China because they call it Southern Tibet. 
So it is quite possible that they are preparing the ground for arguing that if the Dalai Lama is born in, uh, in Tawang, it will be within their reach. And this is just a, a theory. Nobody knows. Nobody has talked about it. Uh, and in general, of course, the intention of, the, of China is to keep the border alive, keep things happening so that there is no let go by, by either China or India. So we are also quite ready. And when such things happen, we immediately move in and resist it, even if it means some loss of life, etc. But since there is a, an understanding that, uh, you know, weapons like guns, etc., grenades, etc., will not be used, so the, uh, the, the casualties are very few. In fact, our defense minister in his statement in parliament said that there were no casualties. Nobody died on either side. Uh, but certainly, it was a matter of serious uh, importance for us because the Indian Army is on a kind of ridge at a high level, looking down to the other side of the LOC, LOAC, with Chinese soldiers assembled there. And so it was very easy for India to spot. This happened though at 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, they, they spotted them and called for reinforcements. And within minutes, they were able to send them back. So the Chinese reaction to this was also was rather mild. They simply said that such things happen. And when these things happen, we'll deal with it in an appropriate manner by the commanders, etc. But of course, put the blame on India for taking the initiative in doing such things. So for the time being, it looks as though the whole thing will not escalate and uh, there has been no occupation of Indian territory. They came in and left according to our own government. And of course, it is a bit of a mystery that this happened on the 9th, but the government of India did not announce it till the 13th. So maybe they did not think this was a major incident and that may be the reason. Or maybe they didn't want to disturb the peace in the region and say that we had something, but parliament was in session. And the government was obliged to report to parliament. And after a lot of protests and others by the opposition, uh, they convinced the parliament that this was the right thing to do. And uh, China should be answerable for this. And uh, we only took defensive measures, etc. So it looks, it has been settled. But all these reasons, uh, are, uh, you know, disturbing. Because uh, they're talking about uh, the, the exercises in, in our own territory. And um, they think that our patrols went beyond the LOC line of control, LOC, the line of actual control. So um, for the time being, of course, we have said that uh, we'll definitely be able to meet any uh, crisis situation. And um, of course, the Chinese army said that their response was professional, firm, and standard. That's what they said. And so there's nothing uh, extraordinary. And both sides disengaged. So, and uh, the border is uh, generally stable. So, and the communications are continuing. Uh, but some people, some observers say that uh, there could have been some uh, risk of. Uh, miscalculation on either side. And uh, India's position on the border is a little more advanced than before. It was not a, um, you know, just a, not, a, not just a presence, but they are ready for action since uh, uh, 2020, since what happened in Ladakh, of course, 2017, it had also happened in, uh, on the Bhutan border. So we take this in very seriously. And uh, therefore, we maintain the communication. But we are taking ready to make take more risks in the situation. And therefore, they may have been in proactive in dealing with the, with the incursion. So this is something that we have to put at the back of our minds when we talk of things happening in uh, China. One, the, the, the revolt or the protests, which have become very serious. People thought that this might become like a 
Tiananmen Square uh, massacre of uh, 1979. So, uh, anyway, sorry, 1989. So, whatever happened uh, is now uh, more or less settled, but a lot of time will be taken in analyzing what it meant and what the consequences would be. Uh, coming back to the visit of President Xi Jinping to Saudi Arabia, uh, this is being characterized by some commentators as a tectonic shift. You know what the tectonic shift is. That is what causes earthquakes. When there are the tectonic uh, level of the earth gets disturbed and there could be a, an earthquake or several things can happen. And so, uh, tectonic shift means the shift is very, very fundamental and uh, it will have its consequences. And this is being called so because there is a major change in Saudi Arabia's policies towards the United States and then towards China and Russia. So, uh, we know that uh, President Trump, when he went to Saudi Arabia, he was given a very warm welcome because he was purchasing a lot of arms and armaments from them. Uh, so the uh, Saudi uh, crown prince received him with all pomp and splendor when Mr. Donald Trump went there and he came back very happy that uh, the Saudis are very friendly with them as before. But when Mr. When President Biden went there more recently, he did not get much of a warm welcome. Uh, it was um, fairly formal and uh, kind of stiff on both sides, on the side of President Biden as well as on the side of the of the Crown Prince, who is now Prime Minister. Uh, he is known all over the world as the most powerful man in Saudi Arabia, and um, so. But uh, this time, when uh, Chinese President went there, he went out of his way to be very friendly and very cordial with the uh, Chinese uh, president. And this, I believe, when people describe it as a work in progress since about six years or so, when the, uh, the, the situation about the um, fuel, you know, the fossil fuels availability, uh, Americans, as you know, were very much dependent on the Gulf region. And uh, they, they thought that oil was thicker than blood. And therefore, the iraq Kuwait war was initiated. And so they had a major stake in the Middle, in the Middle East, what they call the GCC, the Gulf Council, Cooperation Council. All those countries are together, and Saudi Arabia is the biggest among them. And um, so the GCC countries, United States had a a dependent uh, position because they had to buy oil from them. But now with the oil production in the United States, that priority is gone. And therefore, both are looking at alternate markets. So, uh, United States wants to sell their oil to whoever can buy it. The Saudis want to have full control of the oil situation in the, uh, in the Gulf. And um, so they have been discussing various things. And uh, this has been going on. And at the end of six years, you have this uh, uh, meeting where President uh, Xi Jinping was very well received. And a large number of agreements were signed. And particularly in the production, oil production, because China is the biggest buyer of Saudi Arabian oil. So that way they have a stake in the country. And they have now, uh, you know, made political moves in order to distance themselves from the United States. This is very exceptional because uh, Saudi Arabia was very, very close to uh, United States. Of course, they were irritated by what happened about Khashoggi's murder. You know, the journalist who was murdered in Istanbul in the in the consulate, and um, and that was being attributed to somebody, some people in Saudi Arabia who had ordered the murder of this gentleman. And about that, the United States has been fairly frank and loud about it. 
and they have been saying that this was wrong. But still, at the same time, Donald Trump took a uh, took a cool view of it because he felt that the business has to go on. But uh, President Biden has been more specific about uh, criticism of what happened, and he spoke about human rights in Saudi Arabia, which is a big issue. So, so on the one side, one side China was wooing Saudi Arabia. On the other side, the United States was distancing itself from Saudi Arabia. And in the middle of that, that Mr. Biden went there to ask them to reduce the production of oil uh, so that the uh, prices can be kept under control. But apparently, Saudi Arabia did not uh, uh, agree to that. Not only that, uh, President Biden was given a cold shoulder by the prince. So that is why they say that from a, uh, a, a very friendly Saudi Arabia United States relationship to a better relationship with China, reflecting the change of circumstances in the world. And um, Saudi Arabia has also been getting closer to Russia. So with these major countries, they are developing relationship, uh, moving away from the uh, traditional friendship that they have enjoyed with the United States. So there was a lot of pomp and show there. And um, they also had uh, meetings with other GCC countries. And uh, Saudi also, um, they warmed up to Russia. And therefore, contrary to the uh, different from the visit of uh, President Biden, uh, the visit of uh, Xi Jinping was extremely uh, cordial and friendly. And this, as I said, was developing over a period of time. People say about six years this has been going on. And uh, then they not only held meetings between Saudi Arabia and China, but also China and uh, other GCC countries. So some it's, uh, GCC countries have uh, called to uh, Riyadh and they met uh, uh, the Chinese uh, presidents. So people are seeing that this is a new era in China's relations with Saudi Arabia and also uh, the GCC countries' relations with, uh, with China. And as I mentioned earlier, China is the largest consumer of oil. And um, they would like to see how uh, that situation can contribute to the region's growth. And um, they are also looking for security and uh, defense cooperation uh, because they do not feel that the United States is uh, totally committed to the security of Saudi Arabia. So this is yet another snub to Washington. And um, so the grievances the United States had about the Biden visit still uh, fresh in their memory. In addition to that, uh, the uh, the visit of uh, President Xi Jinping to Saudi Arabia. So this is part of uh, China's influence, uh, increasing influence around the world, particularly after his visit to uh, the uh, G20 meeting in uh, Bali, where he, he was very cordially received by everybody, most of the countries of the world that came to shake hands with him. Even our president did that. And he moved around there with, a, with some amount of new confidence. Of course, that was disturbed when he came back to China, when these uh, protests were, they were being held. And uh, But this is given uh, Xi Jinping uh, another, uh, what shall we say, opportunity to project their influence around the world, and particularly in the Gulf countries. Of course, uh, China has been uh, supportive of uh, uh, Palestine liberation and generally Gulf countries. But now this is altogether a new uh, stage in the relationship. Um, so it was a, virtually a new policy in that sense. There was a joint statement issued, about 4,000 words, uh, you know, encompassing the very many activities 
that the two countries could uh, undertake. And it included space, it included in the digital economy, and uh, even the nuclear program. Uh, because um, Ch China is uh, concerned about uh, nuclear program of uh, other countries, but in the case of uh, GCC, uh, for peaceful use of nuclear energy, they are willing to uh, cooperate. And um, they have been, they have played down the other differences that they have on the question of Yemen and um, Russian war in uh, Ukraine. These things, they have taken a, uh, the Chinese have not taken a serious view. This is because it is, it is economic, political and defense and so on. All these have come handy for them at this time. And, uh, they want to develop this much uh, further. Uh, so it has really made the region very close to China. And uh, everyone understands that this is a, there's a new uh, alliance developing in the Middle East. Uh, there are certain issues like um, the oil, what are the big plans, how are they going to handle this. So since uh, the Americans are themselves in the market to sell oil to others, so there is a little bit of competition between them and the Americans. Uh, but they will uh, remain, uh, you know, tied to with the, with, with the American relationship. And um, so many projects which are ongoing with the Americans will not be disturbed. Uh, so advance about the, uh, the investment that is coming into Saudi Arabia will be very big. And uh, defense cooperation uh, will also be uh, promoted, which will mean that uh, United States will buy fewer weapons and maybe China will buy more of them. There seems there was an understanding between China and Saudi Arabia and generally GCC countries that uh, there will be non-interference in internal affairs um, uh, because, you know, uh, Chinese have certain concerns and um, the, the, the GCC has been uh, criticizing minority human rights in, uh, in China, particularly the Muslim Uyghurs in, in China. And um, so they agreed that such issues they will discuss in private and not discussed in, in public. So there was some kind of advantage that uh, they have said, uh, there have been talk about a new kind of currency for uh, dealings in the in oil. And China has proposed some kind of a China, Chinese uh, currency based uh, new system. And um, it will be based on Chinese currency. And this will be a big change for uh, China and Washington. But uh, it has already been made clear that the petrodollar, which is the base for purchase of oil at the moment, will not be changed altogether. So there was fear that this would be completely suspended and the China-based uh, currency will become available for deals in uh, oil. Uh, but that has been put off. They have said that uh, those will be maintained. While they develop a Chinese currency for these purposes, Petrol oil will be maintained because if it is not there, then the US uh, would be out of the game altogether. So, but in spite of all that, Washington is not happy and the uh, US is mindful of the, the foray that China is making into the, into the GCC. So, uh, the competition in the marketplace is also important. And uh, U.S. is trying to keep the momentum going to the extent possible, uh, but everybody understands that this is a new policy of China. So it has to be seen how this develops uh, because the U.S. has very deep involvement in uh, Saudi Arabia. Even at the time of uh, uh, bin Laden and so on, 
Saudi Arabia was very friendly with the United States. So that they may want to maintain. Uh, but on dollar, because of the new situation, it may not be possible for them to have a good cooperation. And China is looking for bigger and bigger buyers. And China is one of their biggest buyers. So they are competitors now as against uh, uh, good friends and close friends area. So as I said, this has been considered a major shift in international geopolitics and international relations. And uh, we have to watch because we also have major interests in GCC. And we have uh, millions of Indians in that region. And any kind of uh, foray by the Chinese into the region, of course, they're already there. Uh, but that will also put us in competition with the Chinese. So that also we have to bear in mind. Generally, the growth of Chinese influence is not in our interest. And therefore, this might also not only cause concern to the United States, but also concern to us, this new uh, Chinese policy in, uh, in the Gulf. What exactly is happening in China now? And what does it for uh, Xi Jinping, whether his uh, uh, you know, continuation of, for life as the president will be affected by any of these things, we don't know. Uh, but certainly, the confidence that the Chinese and the GCC countries are showing in each other is extremely is significant, and it will have its impact on not only on relations with, the, with Russia, the United States, uh, but also with India. And uh, the growing friendship between Russia and China is also of concern to uh, the US and us, uh, but that is not directly linked with the relationship with the GCC. So that is the situation on the one hand, we have problems in the border which on the border with China needs to be still analyzed and why it happened, how it happened, how it will develop, why India did not announce it immediately when it happened. Why is it China and India seem to be very keen to play it down? All these questions we will know later. Uh, but this is the situation that I wanted to talk to you about. One other development uh, which, is, uh, which has been noticed is Saudi Arabia wants to become a member of BRICS. You know, BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, a group of countries. And uh, China is quite uh, dominant here uh, because the, the bank, BRICS bank, is located there. And they are the strongest country within BRICS. And so China has a, has a big role there. And maybe because of that, Saudi Arabia has expressed a desire to join BRICS. There are other countries also wanting to join BRICS. Uh, but uh, China wanting to join, uh, sorry, Saudi Arabia wanting to join them is being seen as a, as a new development which has to be, which has to be back, watched. Uh, BRICS does not do too much. Uh, they have ambitions to, the bank wants to replace the Britain Woods institutions. Uh, they want to remove the monopoly of West from the, the, from the World Bank, et cetera. And so as a counter to the World Bank, they're developing this uh, bank also. So there could be some changes there too. And um, as far as joining the BRICS is concerned, of course, all the member countries have to agree. And we are not likely to object. Unless, of course, we feel that it is a compact organization, it should remain so. But that is something which we have to see. But uh, and definitely, uh, Saudi Arabia is showing interest in, in joining BRICS. And maybe then it will become BRICS or something like that. And uh, for Saudi Arabia. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. Well, border issues do not relate immediately to territorial expansion. Territorial expansion is implied in all this. But the border occurrences of uh, you know, events on the border is engineered by China continuously to keep India guessing about what is going to happen on the border. Because their main purpose is to teach India a lesson, as they say, keep saying, 
And the lesson is that India will not have the predominant position in Asia. And that is China's. And if India is willing to accept a secondary position, then there will be no problem. So that is really the purpose. Expansion, etc. will come later. And uh, that's a subsequent step. So at the moment, by keeping the LOAC, the line of, sorry, LAC, um, undecided is so that they can, whatever, and choose their own time and uh, energy to come and cause trouble for us in the border. So it is, of course, eventually it is uh, territorial expansion. Uh, but the motivation now is to keep India guessing and making sure that uh, there is disruption in our growth and in our sense of security. These are the two things that they are attacking. And um, this will, whether it will lead to the solution of the border problem, we do not know, uh, because the border discussion is being suspended while they are still occupying our land. But in this particular incident, they have no land occupied by uh, China. Uh, but this is also a sign of what is to come. So it is very disturbing in every way, the kind of uh, frequent occurrences. And this has happened every time there was something important in the world, even when President Xi Jinping was sitting on a, uh, on a swing with uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Chinese soldiers are walking into our territory across the line of actual control. So this is a, this is a kind of uh, exercise they do in order to keep their claim alive, so that when discussions take place, they can say these are the things that happen and should be avoided. Because that is far, far away. These discussions on the border have not made, made any headway because they are still discussing preliminary aspects. And they have not even gone to tackle the main issue. So it's a dual thing, territorial expansion, certainly. And also uh, keeping the border um, restless and uh, uh, turbulent. And that seems to be the motivation. Towards Israel, they have they are slowly making peace. You know that. The starting with Camp David Accords in 1979, Egypt was the first to normalize relations. Since then, many Arab countries, and of course, latest was the Abraham Accords. And uh, so the Arab countries are getting closer to um, uh, Israel. And of course, that endangers the future of Palestine, etc. But still, they are doing that. And Israel is cooperating with them. You may have heard that uh, Israel's, Israelis are landing up in hundreds in Dubai and others with investment. There is even a quad which includes UAE and India, UAE, India, Israel, and USA. So there's a quad also has been formed. So they are no more shy about dealing with Israel. And, uh, and the peace agreements are being signed with various countries. Some have not signed, Saudi Arabia has not signed. So there may be uh, indication that uh, uh, they will be closely working with Israel also. I do not know what is whether Israel buys oil from Saudi Arabia, probably they do. And uh, that may be another factor. So they are not uh, particularly uh, concerned about Israel anymore. They think they can work with each other. Well, any kind of sabotage is, uh, is possible, but there is no indication as such because they're all members of the OPEC and there are some rules and regulations in OPEC. So you cannot suddenly change anything or monopolize something. Or, um, that is not possible, at least present circumstances. Maybe later years, but as of now, they are playing by the rules. That's why they clarified that they were not changing into petrol dollars. They might use for limited purposes, particularly during the war, they may use it for limited purposes in order to they can uh, survive and control the prices, etc. But as you know, the price of oil is going to be the biggest casualty in the war. And as the war ends immediately, there will be many, many complications uh, extending up to uh, the fight against climate change and everything else. So that is a that is a big danger. But the OPEC is very quite united 
when it comes to uh, export and import of oil. And they have held together. You know, in the climate change negotiations, they don't support what the developing countries are asking for. Because they say that uh, you know, cutting your consumption of uh, fossil fuels will harm the economies of these countries. So there is that complication also. So we cannot expect a big change in the oil industry, uh, but uh, they, they can, in fact, develop into a big thing. And the Americans, since they are now also sellers of oil, so there will be no um, you know, complicity possible between Saudi Arabia and the uh, United States. So that is why I think China is trying to make hay while the sun shines. Well, NATO should have been abolished at the end of the Cold War. And uh, Warsaw Pact actually got abolished. So for a so long time, the former Warsaw Pact countries were asking us to what is happening to NATO. But by then, NATO got involved in various things that the United States wanted to happen in different parts of the world, whether it was Libya or whether it is Afghanistan. So the fact that it was a European organization was forgotten mostly. And um, they were uh, operating in, uh, in various, uh, various areas. So uh, we don't know. Uh, it, it, this uh, present situation, NATO plays a role. And uh, the war in uh, Russia, Ukraine war is, of course, the Ukraine side is being supported by uh, NATO in a big way, even though Ukraine is not in NATO. And uh, also this whole suspicion of Western Europe by Russia and others is based on the fact that NATO is still very active. And if these countries join NATO, it will be troublesome for them because that will bring the NATO forces onto the borders of, of Russia. So this whole thing originated from this quarrel about NATO, that the old uh, Russian republics will not be allowed to enter there. But many of them have already entered and more want to do, and uh, um, Ukraine also. But after starting the war, Ukraine, Ukraine asked for a, an immediate entry into NATO, emergency admission. But that the NATO countries did not really give. Because once you do that, if they become a regular member of the NATO, then there is a, an obligation for NATO to fight the war, which they do not want to do. So they want to fight it only through sanctions. And therefore, any uh, role for uh, NATO in uh, these countries will be, will be resisted. And that is why Putin is taking this very strong stand uh, that no country should be admitted. Uh, you know that uh, Finland and Denmark, I think, two countries have already applied. And they are going slow on it. And therefore, NATO's role is a matter of concern to uh, United uh, to uh, Russia and also China. Uh, China was calling the Quad uh, uh, an Asian NATO. So that's the worst thing that they can call it. And therefore, they say that this will be against our interests. So NATO has a role to play, an increasing role now because of the war. And with the war ends, maybe there could be some uh, change. But as of now, NATO is an important uh, force to reckon with in these countries. No, on the nuclear issue, as you know, a, a partial agreement was signed by Barack Obama, which was broken by Trump, because it said only restriction for 15 years. So. Trump naturally asked, after 15 years, what? So let us give them much more, uh, you know, restraint in a nuclear uh, deal. Uh, but um, Iran is getting worse and worse economically, and they want to get out of the sanctions. And that is why they have started negotiating with the United States and you know, five uh, European countries on a new deal. And that was on the verge of being approved in Vienna. Uh, but then it broke up. So we do not know what the situation is. But the American priority in Iran is to prevent Iran becoming a nuclear weapon state. 
and uh, there, there'd be no concessions because they know that Iran could be a terrorist state. And that is, a, is an issue uh, which concerns other countries. Even India, we have good relations with uh, Iran, but we do not want India, Iran to be a nuclear weapon state. They have signed, they have signed the NPT and they, live by, they should abide by it. And Iran has also been trying to cooperate with the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, so that uh, this does not become a confrontation. They abide by what IAEA tell them, tells them and also sometimes go against it. But they are adopting a friendly approach so that the, the ire, the, the anger of uh, all the other countries also do not go against it. So they plead with the neighboring countries and India, etc., that this is not a nuclear weapon program. It's an energy program and it is needed for Iran. And that is how they argue with us. And also they have right to develop nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. So like we have. So Iran was, I got the impression talking to the Iranian ambassador who was sitting next to me in the IAEA for many years. So I could see that he was uh, very admiring of India, how we have handled our nuclear issue. Because no big sanctions came against us till 98. Till 98, we managed it uh, without any kind of international action against us, even though we had not signed the NPT. But after 1998, of course, uh, they are totally against India developing anything. Then in 2008, we signed this uh, nuclear deal, which has enabled us to work on the uh, power programs. So this is a, it's a complex uh, situation. But um, many countries in the region, whatever may be their politics, believe that a nuclear weapon in the hands of Iran will not be conducive to, uh, to, to peace and stability in, uh, in Asia and the world. Okay then, thank you very much. See you again, bye-bye.